But your personal experience has to be worth a lot, you know, and, and everybody, you know, you learn something from what you've gone through. Right from the moment, I'm sure that you found out that you were, you were pregnant and, you know, no man ever has to worry about this. But goodness me, I mean, that's a transformation of your body, your mind, your life from there on in. What was it like? How did you handle that? Well, I got, um, I fell pregnant with my, my eldest, India, who's nearly six, when I was 26. So I was the first of my friends to get pregnant. And it was definitely a bit of a shock. Very, very exciting, obviously, but none of my friends were in that kind of route headspace. Um, so for me, it was kind of just finding my feet. I had no one really to go to for advice other than the Mummy Felstead, who features quite heavily with her advice in this book as well. Um, quite old school and traditional. Um, but of course, it's scary, isn't it? But I feel like it's becoming a mum has given me purpose. It's given me everything that I could possibly want that I didn't realise I needed. Yeah, and you talked about your website, Bloss, and people who follow you on Instagram will, will see that you, you have sort of become a parenting advocate in a way. And I know you're pregnant again at the moment with your third. And recently you've been diagnosed with gestational diabetes and talk quite a lot about that on, on your platform. And you've become a sort of role model, haven't you, for people? Because a lot of people find that frightening when they get that diagnosis. Yeah, I mean, I'm still learning about it. It was only diagnosed last week and I still have no idea what really is going on. But... Um, Yes, I think when I did come out about it, there's quite a, a stigma around GD because I think people think you get it if you're really unhealthy or overweight. And I love working out. I eat healthy, um, go on long walks most days. So it really isn't the case. And I think when I posted about it, it gave people a bit of a confidence to say, OK, well, this, this, this is actually quite common. Mm. And I had no idea how common it was until I, I got it myself. So I'm just kind of working out what I can eat. And obviously, being in my third trimester, all I do want to eat is beige food and, you know, <laughs> sugar. <laughs> so. I know, and I would just say, do it, but you can't, can you? I'd normally just say to a pregnant person, just do it. No, you know, no, you've you got to keep well. <laughs> yeah, there are ways in which you can do it. Apparently, there's certain order you can eat your food. So your green leaves first, and then I think it's your, oh, don't get, uh, I think it's protein and carbs. But there's ways in which you can do it. And uh, you can have a cheat day occasionally. Yeah. Um, of all the jobs you've done, of all the things you've done, I mean, including writing the book, Binky, um, how does being a mum, how does being a parent compare to that in terms of it being a job? I think it's the most rewarding job I've ever had and I'm doing. Um, I don't think I'm quite there yet with the, the toughest part. I think the toughest part's going to be for me when my kids have flown the nest and they're out at God knows what time and doing God knows what, and I haven't got control over them anymore. So <laughs> that's what I'm really dreading the most. <laughs> you'll be like Mummy Felstead. They'll still come back, I guarantee it. That You've got to keep that close relationship and you'll be sorted. Um, I just want to I ask really you lastly, um, you talked a lot about um, in your book about the term blended family. I know you don't like it, but people like Kate Ferdinand, have they helped like, break down the barriers, perhaps some of the taboos around the idea of a blended family? Um, I, I never really say it. I've only had to yeah. say it in the book because it's the only thing that you, you, that people know these days to say, we don't think of ourselves as a blended family. We are a family. Yeah. Um, I would never would like, I'd never like India to call her brothers, her half brothers. I, you know, Max regards India as his daughter. There's no kind of step half. And I think that's really important. I don't, I don't want India to feel any lesser than her brothers because she is essentially Max's stepdaughter. Do you know what I mean?